and well done for your fantastic writing about your great adventurer this week. It's almost done, we're nearly there. Today we're going to be finishing off the final paragraph of our um, biography and using a quote and then tomorrow we can finish off our work with an infographic, um, a diagram or a picture an image or a map to show some information to go with our biography. So all you need today is your pencil or pen and just your work that you're continuing with on your great adventurer. Let's get started. So the first thing that I would like you to do today is to read through your work so far right from the very beginning and I'd like you to be um, read it out loud. Have a think what you're doing really well. What have you have you used great um, dates and information key events from their life? Have you managed to use our inspirational vocabulary? Have you used a rhetorical question? So think about all the things that you've done really, really well. But I would really like you to read your work aloud because when you do that, you are able to then check and edit your work really clearly. Um, and obviously we are always looking to make sure that we've used sentences correctly. So here are some non-negotiables that we should be always looking for in our writing now that we are obviously well on our way through um, primary school. So just remind yourself of some of the non-negotiables, so some of the things we always have to remember, even if we sometimes need to give ourselves a little reminder. So capital letters uh, at the start, so sentences, capital letters also for proper names proper nouns uh, for names of people and places um, and there will be plenty of those in your biography of course so must check for capital letters. When we're reading through aloud make sure you notice where you pause and come to the end of a sentence and add in a full stop uh, or an exclamation mark or a question mark if that's appropriate but checking that sentence punctuation is really good and reading aloud is the way to do it. Um, there are lots of places where we would use commas as well. Um, again, if you take a small uh, pause in a sentence, that could be an indication that there's a comma, certainly after a sentence opener, or if we've used a subordinate clause first in the sentence, um, then we will need a comma after that. Um, also, while you're reading, just be thinking, could I be up leveling? If I've got some vocabulary, could I improve on it? If I was writing that there was a bad storm on the sea, perhaps I could improve on the word bad and I could see it, uh, say it was a raging storm or a fierce tropical storm or I could and I could up level the vocabulary and in doing that I would improve um, I'd make my writing really sort of much more impactful for the reader. Perhaps if we're using a verb and we're saying that our um, adventurer rode somewhere we could use a different verb such as battled or struggled on or something like that. So think about up leveling vocabulary as you go and whether or not you could use different sentence openers. So perhaps start saying the year that something happened in 2011 comma or at the age of something comma. So think about those sentence openers and also ask yourself, have you managed to use a high level conjunction? Um, such as although or despite in your writing. So I would like you to pause the video now and read your work that so far aloud and do that editing. Perhaps it'd be great to see a different coloured pen um, or pencil for you to make those changes in and that would be brilliant. And then we'll be ready to carry on with our final paragraph of our biography. Brilliant. So as you can see, we have really almost got there. If we check the checklist, we've, we've virtually ticked all of those, I am sure, already. 
Um, perhaps you've already used a quote, but if not, we're going to talk about that in a moment. And then the final paragraph at the bottom there is our main focus today. Our final paragraph should mention the main achievements of the person, their personality and how they will be remembered. Sometimes when you're reading a piece, uh, a longer piece of writing, how it's organised, is often when you get to the last part of the paragraph, you think, well, I've said it all already, but that's just how it works. And I think basically what the, the reason for the final paragraph is, yes, we've, we've mentioned all the things we want to mention, but we want to put into our readers' minds the key messages that we want them to remember and to take away with them. So that's why we will have said this before. There'll be nothing new, but we're just going to encapsulate that in a short final paragraph to make sure that our readers remember the key points about our um, our great adventurer. OK, so let's get going. So quotes, um, let's think if we've not used a quote, then then we could do that. And then a couple of people use them earlier on, which is fine. You don't have to use the same quote again or anything. But this might be quite a good place to use a quote just before your final paragraph. And certainly in our example that we had, we had the quote which was written with speech marks and it was just dropped into the um, dropped into the text just before the final paragraph. So now's a good time. And that's the quote that I've put on the screen there from Sarah Uton. What's stopping you? It's you, isn't it? Um, now, I did have a little look around for some other quotes, some alternatives that might, you might like to use. And actually, I didn't find anything quite as good, I didn't think. But I just thought I'd show you this one um, out of interest. This was from Sarah Uton's Twitter feed, which was from 2017. But I'm not sure if she was remembering some events um, from her tour around the world. It certainly looks like it. Um, and it wasn't something she said, it was somebody that saw her when she was cycling. And it says a favourite quote from a passerby during the frozen period. So I think that could have been in North America because I read that it was like one of the, the harshest winters on record in North America when she was riding through. Are you guys lost? No one ever cycles out here, not even in summer. And there she is wrapped up with her mask on her face and her goggles um, and oh my goodness. So again, showing her bravery, it could be an interesting one to use. Um, you would need to explain who'd said that. OK, but if it's just the, the Sarah Uton quote, then you can just literally, as we saw here, drop that one in. Let's have a look at some quotes that Rick Hansen said. He did. Uh, I did find lots of quotes from him. So the one that we use, we found from the text is that there is nothing you can't do. If you set your mind to it, anything is possible. And other similar quotes that he has said, if you believe in a dream and have the courage to try, anything is possible. I really like that. And always set goals and work as hard as you can. You'll be amazed at what you can do. That's a great message for us, isn't it? So you could use one of those quotes from Rick for Rick Hansen. So moving on to our final paragraph of our biography, the final paragraph should mention the main achievements, the personality and how they will be remembered. And it's interesting because in, in Alistair Humphrey's book, Great Adventurers, he has all written his famous, his final paragraph in all cases by saying why this particular adventurer inspired him. So it says, why Sarah Uton inspired me? Why Rick Hansen inspired me? And he's done that for every single one of the adventurers, the 20 explorers that he has um, written about. And actually, I think that's quite a good thing that you could choose to do if you like. Talk about why that person inspired you. Um, so let's read what he said. Why Sarah Uton inspired me? Kayaking at sea is challenging. Ocean rowing requires many different skills and can be extremely dangerous. Cycling across the continent is tough. Sarah combined all these in her unique, fascinating journey. Traditionally, adventures have mostly been completed by men, but more women like Sarah are tackling epic challenges. She is a brilliant role model for girls dreaming of adventure. Fantastic. And let's have a look at for Rick Hansen. Why Rick Hansen inspired me. 
I learned about Rick when I cycled through his hometown whilst on my own journey around the world. Because remember, Alistair Humphrey wrote this book. He's an adventurer too. I was pretty proud of myself for cycling so far until I learned that a paralysed man had done it in a wheelchair. In response to Rick's journey, the people of Canada lined the roads to watch him cycle past and donated huge amounts of money to his charity. It united the nation and showed everyone the potential of people with disabilities. So there you can see that the final paragraphs has mentioned the achievements again and their personality and also popped into um, the reader's mind the, the very thing that, uh, the, that he wants us to remember. So we're going to have a go at writing our own final paragraph now. So take a moment just to think and reflect about the kind of things that you really want to include in this final paragraph, the personality wise and about the main achievements as well. Um, so I've written a few notes here about the incredible, being incredible, bravery, resilience, that's that ability to not give up when things get tough, never give up, determination, strength in the face of challenges. And I'm even writing down some uh, vocabulary, tough um, and gruelling um, and an inspiration, which will be useful when I'm writing my paragraph. Brilliant. So why Sarah Uten inspired me? So I think I might start with um, Sarah's epic journey. So remember, we're allowed to just repeat certain things we've said around the world or navigating or circumnavigating the globe. Sarah's epic, epic journey around the world showed me that, I'm trying to write too small here, sorry, that anything is possible. If you dare to dream and work for those dreams. Whoops, a bit tiny. Can you see just about brilliant? So it's a good first sentence. Sarah's epic journey around the world showed me that anything is possible if you dare to dream and work for those dreams, full stop. And then I might continue with her incredible bravery and resilience in the face of the most gruelling challenges on the ocean and on land are an inspiration to people all around the world and shows that anything is possible. There we go, I've had a go. So. I would like you now to have a go at your final paragraph. So if you'd like to pause the video at this point where you can see those notes that I've made, I think these would apply to um, possibly most adventurers. So you might be able to use some of those ideas I've noted down and have a go at writing your final paragraph. Well done. Brilliant, you've done it. And we, we did mention that we've added an extra thing really about the an extra item on the checklist about using a map or an infographic to represent the information for the biography. So I'll just put that on a um, activity for tomorrow. Uh, and you might want to publish your work, you might want to draw that infographic to represent some facts in a really sort of visual an easy to access way that relates to that person's adventure. But we'll have a go at that tomorrow because I think you've worked really hard today and well done. So looking forward to seeing your work on Seesaw. Brilliant. And I'm going to leave you today with a little bit of a song that I really remember from 1985. You'll be thinking, oh my gosh, Mrs Elliot, how old? But it's a song that I remember and it was written all about Rick Hansen. And um, 
it's been fascinating to me to, to find out about Rick Hansen because I can't remember his man in motion from when I was young, but I really remember this song. And when you listen to the words, you can tell that this song was written all about him. So I'll play you a little bit of it now. bit of 80s um fantastic i love that song and now i know what it's all about brilliant <laughs> so well done and i'm looking forward to seeing your work on seesaw <laughs> 